Welcome to the Missouri Business Podcast. The show is chock full of insight on what it's like to start, stop, and drive a thriving business in our great state. Each episode, we'll dive into the mind of a show me state business owner so you can avoid their mistakes and glean their expertise for your gain. Now, here's your host, John Piazza Norton. Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Missouri Business Podcast. My name is John Piazza Norton and today I have a good friend Rob Warden here with the Cleaning Connection. How are you, Rob? Hey, doing good. Thanks. How are Excellent. you? Excellent. Very good. So I uh, wanted to bring Rob in. He's been uh, in the community for doing what he does for how many years now? Yeah, uh, 31 years doing carpet cleaning. 31 years. He's probably cleaned some, one of your carpets. <laughs> There's a good chance. Um, we're going to go through a little bit of what you've been doing, and then we'll kind of start. Uh, we'll go through the started up section, let people know kind of how the entrepreneurial spirit got built in you over time and, and how you took advantage of that. And then we'll talk about maybe some things that we shut down. Maybe we uh, uh, some of the things that we tried didn't go so well. And that's okay. Sure. That's a theme of the show. It's okay what do you do with it? And so fine. And then finally, I'll ask you some crazy questions like we always do. So, <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about some of the companies that you've had, um, that you are currently doing. Tell us how that all works. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, well, really we're mostly a cleaning business, a cleaning company. Okay. Uh, we focus on carpet cleaning, air duct cleaning, uh, several other related type services. Okay. Uh, Prior to that, I had uh, began with a company called Looking Up Ceiling Cleaning Company. Okay. And uh, uh, that was kind of ran parallel with me cleaning carpets, but at, but at that time I was working for another company. And, I see. Uh, uh, vendors send literature to uh, uh, you know, related type companies, and, and I was kind of looking over the ceiling cleaning business aspect gotcha. one time and uh, thought it looked good to me and moved right into it. Okay. And so... You were working with somebody, you were doing carpet cleaning with them? Uh, yes, with another company. Gotcha. Got right. it. Okay. And um, you also have some other things going on. Do you have a mobile home park? Uh, yep. I own a mobile home park. Bought that in uh, 2015. And, okay. Uh, uh, that, that's been a great thing and uh, learning more about it every day, though. Well, it sounds like you're, you're a busy guy. I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Now, you own the Cleaning Connection over 25 years? Uh, yep, bought it in 1994. Okay, so right at that. Very good. Yes. Um, tell, well, we always do this at the beginning and the end. Let's talk about some of the ways to get a hold of you should somebody have questions about the show or um, just questions about carpet cleaning, whatever, in general. You've got a uh, Facebook page. Yep, the Clean Connection of St. Joseph. Okay, and then a website as well. Yes, the thecleanconnection.net. That's pretty easy. Yeah. Crazy. Start them up. Let's talk about what got it started for you first. Okay. okay. Um, well, I, I decided at a very young age, uh, when I grew up, I was going to own my own business someday. Gotcha. And uh, it, it's kind of funny, though. I, I didn't really have much direction or, or plan of what I wanted to do when I grew up mm -hmm. uh, or what business I'd want to uh, uh, begin or, or, or develop. Sure. And uh, a lot of family members were entrepreneurs uh, okay. you know, in my, my young years, so I was uh, able to see a lot of different different ventures and, and not all more successful sure but uh sure. uh still you know i saw the hard work uh but i, I saw people being their own boss and uh, i think that's probably what uh, did, did inspire me uh okay. to have that uh, freedom to be, be your own boss kind of set your own hours and, and i t when i'm thinking about this and obviously the people that i'm talking to that's the answer all the time is oh i always wanted to own my own business i wonder if there's people that don't say that Right. You know, I'm, I know that my mom didn't want me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> get a job, get benefits, get something safe. Right. Well, I've been let go from several of those safe environments. Yes. But when you know how to create your own income, what's safer than that? Right. Yep. 
the the only thing holding you back at that point is you being lazy. <laughs> right. I mean, that's it. Yes. That's the only thing that would stop you from being successful. Yep. So let's talk about um, the special sauce that you feel like you have. We're never going to talk bad about other businesses. We're not going to do that. <laughs> so we're just going to talk well about what you're doing and what puts you over the top, what makes uh, a trip from you guys to my house the thing that will keep you coming back. Right. Okay. Uh, really, I feel like when when we enter a customer's home, uh, I really want them to know that, that I feel like they are the boss. Okay. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm working for them, and I don't forget that I'm working for them. Uh, I've been cleaning carpets for 31 years, so I do have a lot of technical knowledge on, on carpet cleaning. Right. But, uh, you know, if customers, you know, asking for something a little different than I had planned, well, I, the customer's the boss. So, sure. uh, so uh, we always kind of cater to what the customer wants and uh, uh, try to personalize our services to to the needs of the customer. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, a lot of people in the industry will have their training, their, their techniques, and the way they want to do things. And, you know, they, they may be rigid in that structure and okay. uh, sometimes maybe not do what the customer wants. Well, the people with the money technically are the boss, that's for sure. Yes. Um, so that's good. I, uh, when I was driving for Uber, people would let me know that, hey, that that's not the way that they want to go. And right. it would tell me that other drivers wouldn't do anything besides what exactly what it said. Sure. If you want me to drive around the city eight times, and that's the way you want to go, that's what we're going to do. Exactly. You're, exactly. you're paying the bill. Right. So, and I and I appreciate that. Um, are there any um, techniques or special machines that you in particular have that you feel uh, helps you do a better job? Oh, we, we do feel we have the top of the line equipment uh, that we use, uh, truck mounted machines that uh, produce uh, great heat. Uh, okay. Uh, Lots of different settings and uh, customization that we can do to, to make sure our machines are performing the best that, that you can get in the industry. Okay, very good. Um, now, as far as your desire to be an entrepreneur, you talked about your family being in it. Did you see a lot of success with that? Um, were you able to help with that at all in their businesses, or was that kind of removed from you? Um, as far as aunts and uncles, that, that would be more removed from yeah. me. Uh, my parents uh, owned pretty much mom and pop type grocery stores okay. uh, growing up. So I did, you know, I was, I was working at four or five years old. You know, I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, <laughs> but uh, uh, on, on truck day, warehouse day, the, you know, they needed somebody to carry those boxes out the back door and throw them in the dumpster with well, it. You know, that's something, something I can handle. Perfect. And uh, I actually grew up, you know, kind of working in the weekends and, and, right. and after hours and things like that, even for them. Gotcha. So, uh, okay, it says that uh, you're in the reserve as well. Oh yes, join the join the Army Reserves. So. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for your service. I was in the uh, 146th Aviation Group out of Belton. Yep. Okay. Nice. So yep. Got to fly around in some Chinook helicopters, and that was like a big bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> just, I don't know why, but I've seen like three Chinook helicopters in the last thirty days, and, and you don't see that every day. You really yeah, don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they're, they're not exactly the smoothest machine. But uh, reading your notes from earlier, uh, you were talking about uh, taking orders, and and that was so you you had the opportunity to continue, but then you decided not to. Right. Is that when you started uh, this? particular business is that about the same time you know it really was about the same time frame um, oh, okay yep uh you know I, of course i'd already had knew in my my heart and my mind some you know someday i was going to own my own business right and uh you know i, I joined the army reserves in 1987 gotcha. and, and didn't uh, actually start really in my first business stuff until about 91 to, to 94 was when i was you know kind of trying the different uh business gotcha. avenues uh, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah okay very good um, do the judgments you make in life regularly turn out positively, negatively, kind of a mix? Right. Uh, especially business wise for, for, for the, for the listener. Sure. Uh, I, I feel like I've had success in, in that area. Um, I, I, I feel the background that, that I had, uh, was, was, you know, from good, good parenting and, sure. uh, good, uh, uh, good, good morals in that respect. So, um, I, I think that's kind of helped to, to make decisions in life i think one of the main decisions especially as a small business owner is who you choose to let help you right, right. um hopefully that has gone better than badly because <laughs> uh, that can absolutely ruin 
uh, reputation. It can ruin somebody's carpet. Right. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong. Have you seen a lot of success with that? That's been pretty good for you here in St. Joe. Yep, you're, you're speaking like as a like employee. Employees, or, and, oh, and absolutely. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I've kind of kept a tight knit uh, uh, system of of hiring employees. Okay, uh, usually hiring you know maybe a friend of a friend or referrals, uh, people I know. Uh, I really haven't done a whole lot of of just you know hiring strangers, you know just just from one ads or gotcha. s- something of that nature. That's probably a good plan, especially now you're running uh, a couple crews. Uh, yes. So how about five, six? Uh, we have six employees. Six employees. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you don't need a ton. But for the folks that are sitting at 25, 30, it gets a lot harder to, the friends and family plan becomes tougher. Yes. Just because people run out of folks that they know that are needing a job. Right. Or willing to, to take a, a leap over to something else that they're not sure of when they're they may not be necessarily happy over here, but they know what's going on. Right. So yeah. it's the yeah. devil you know versus the devil you don't know. Kind sure. Of but, uh, you know, we, we have Monday morning meetings, and uh, when, when we are needing more workers, I mean, uh, you know, if I don't have anybody top of mind, I, I even, you know, kind of put it out to the team. Gotcha. You know, hey, you know, we could use a person for this, you know, deal. Do you have any good good leads or good ideas of people that uh, might fit well? Gotcha. Uh, not, not just that they need a job, but, but, but that right. they would fit well. Do a good job, for sure. <laughs> now... Do you have an ability to conceptualize the whole of a business, or do you just have a lot of success at getting the little wins as you go? Yeah, uh, I feel like I'm able to conceptualize the the whole of the business. Um, and I feel like as a business grows, you, you actually need team members to mm-hmm. help you accomplish accomplish the, that vision of what you conceptualize. Well, that and, Monday morning meeting is where where you share those visions of what's going on hey here's here's how the week's going to break down um would you say that the best and biggest part of what you do is in the scheduling is is figuring out times that people need x y and z um uh, i maybe i don't understand exactly what you're what you're asking there Uh, um, i mean is uh as you get the schedule put together Hey, it's eight thirty up here north, and then it's ten thirty all the way down here south, and okay. trying to get that is. Uh, oh yeah, we definitely would would try to prioritize that as much as we can. Gotcha. Uh, can't always control that, you know. You know again, you, you know, and, <laughs> you'd and, like to. And, and we each serve us about a forty five mile radius of St. Joseph, so I mean, we might even be in you know Maryville, Missouri one day, and and Gower, Missouri, you know, later that afternoon. So gotcha. uh, you know, now as much as we can, we try to team up all the jobs north, you know, and 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 keep that under control but gotcha again customer customer get, gets what they want for yeah. sure yeah. and how did you end up determining whether you were able to start a business from scratch or whether you wanted to purchase one that was already established what was your thought process there yep okay um as you and i had talked earlier uh, I, I had started a company called looking up ceiling cleaning okay and uh, that was really my first real venture with a real business um, and you did that from scratch. That was I, I, yep. Did that. Did that from scratch. Gotcha. Uh, totally, and that ended up being a lot of knocking on doors, and and people didn't just call every day to get their ceiling cleaned. Yeah. So uh, a lot of educating the customer. Uh, a yeah, lot mass of be- awareness on something that's not an everyday common occurrence is a large expense, right. whether it's money or time. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yep. So uh, you know, as long as I was knocking on doors, I was getting some business. But but if I'd sit home for a week. There wouldn't be any calls the next week. So. Understood. Yep. So it absolutely uh, uh, was a was a get out there and, and and knock down the doors to to get the business on that. And one. so then the the cleaning connection was already established. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cleaning connection actually is uh, operating in St. Joseph since 1978. Okay. The. Uh, uh, the business owner, though, had had somewhat retired, moved out of town, and was kind of running it uh, uh, from a distance. Oh, I see. And and so it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't in the peak peak uh, level of uh, success, you know, at the time I bought it. Gotcha. Well, hopefully you got a deal then. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, very good. So, uh, any advice that you might have for somebody who's thinking about starting a business right now today? What is the number one piece of advice you would give them? Yep. Uh, I would say if they are not completely sure of themselves, you know, as far as putting together a business plan and and the ideas that you would need to uh, 
you know, move forward with starting the business that, you know, to seek help and, and, and it's available out there. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, you've got small business development centers, yes. uh, the, the, the Craig school business out at the college For sure. uh, out there. Uh, both those places have, have helped me, uh, Absolutely. Met, you know, several times over the years. Uh, and we, we definitely have all the links and everything to all those connections. Should you want them just yeah, email us at the website, and uh, we'll be glad to get them to you. That's great. Like I say, def- definitely call on them to, to help. They are, and they're there and willing to help, and uh, uh, they're very knowledgeable. And it's super free. <laughs> hey, even better. It doesn't cost you a dime. <laughs> The Start em Up section of this podcast was brought to you by BusinessFireman.com. BusinessFireman.com will give you a step-by-step blueprint on how to make money online. No matter what your chosen niche, for a sales and marketing training to help you maximize your digital footprint, it only takes one fireman to get it done. Check out BusinessFireman.com today. Shut it down. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what it's like if we're shutting down a business and, and when to con- when to really consider that. Yep. Um, have you ever had to shut down a business? Um, not not really in a major sense, but with that looking up selling cleaning company, uh, right. you know, again that that was just so intensive on me being out there, um, you know, chasing down the leads. Okay. That. Uh, uh, I don't want to sound too lazy, but but it, it was easier to focus more on the carpet cleaning business where people actually called because they knew they wanted their carpets clean than right. than to me to go out there and try to convince people that they needed to clean their ceilings. Right. No, for and, sure. Uh, so so you know I just kind of merged that uh, ceiling cleaning industry into the carpet cleaning company that I bought. Gotcha. And uh, again, it, it's worked out nice. We still are able to do ceiling cleaning you know services. Right. Um, and, and and I can market that maybe at different times of the year and, and, and different seasons and sure. uh, it works out works out nice to still have it as a sideline but but standing on its own it was it was sure a lot of work for uh, uh, for, oh, yeah. for no more jobs and, and more times you had your phone ring I bet um, are, are there still popcorn ceilings in this world there are still popcorn ceilings in this world and, and what, are you, what are you guys doing yeah. <laughs> what's happening yeah all right yeah we, and we clean those but uh we I'm have sure it's very, not easy. very very limited moisture they'll fall right off <laughs> 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 um so in the notes here i have that um in the before time you had tried multi-level marketing uh, it was amway yes and that was going good and then, just like knocking on doors, if you stop doing it for a little bit, yeah. off went the extra bonuses and all that stuff. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. Yep. Okay. Uh, it was a wonderful experience in my life. I would do it again if the opportunity arose. Um, but uh, as you were saying, it, you know, it, it is just a, a continual, uh, continual workload right. uh, to to kind of keep feeding people into the system because not 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 everybody that uh, is, gets excited about it at first follows through. That's true. Uh, with with what the what, what their dream is. That's and, the, that's for everything. <laughs> that's a hundred percent. The excitement curtails very quickly, um, especially if there's not anything in it for them. Right. Right. But with Amway, there could be. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah the pen- potential's there. Uh, you know, I, I didn't succeed uh, to the top of the business, but but I saw people that did. Yeah. So you know, it's just just a matter of uh, staying with it and uh, uh, maybe catching a break here and there. And uh, well, that goes really back to something that I uh, in your notes that um, if one person can do it, so can somebody else. Right. And I and I wanted to speak to that. What I agree with 100%. Sure. But in business and starting a business or shutting down a business, it gets to the point where I understand that somebody else did it, but did they have more money than me? Because right now I'm trying to start this and it's terrible and my wife's mad. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she says, please don't spend any more money on anything. You know what I mean? Yes. That- so, so when we say other people can do it, so can I. I get it and I love it. But when do you say, ah, I, I don't know if I can do it right now? Yes. Because yep. I think there's some there's a valid point there. Um, because if somebody runs out of money in the middle of something, which is where the business plan comes in. Absolutely. Yep. Is making sure, hey, in these months, here's exactly what I expect. Right. 
and you need to increase it by 30 (laughs) percent yes because things will happen (laughs) yes yes they they will they will uh when you uh were talking about 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 the wife and all that uh that that that, that was uh every every, every, every month in amway yes uh uh, you know know, again i had that dream and kept chasing it but uh it just it just didn't happen for me but you know you know again i I don't blame the system. Right. I, I just didn't follow the system 100. percent No, so. no worries. We we on the show we talk about it quite a bit. Is not everybody has support at home. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to happen for everybody. Right. For those that have that, God bless you. That's awesome, and it, it, it's definitely a blessing for sure. If you don't, that's what this show is for. Yeah. Every one of my guests. You hit them up on Facebook. They will talk. They'll talk. You will. Will you not talk to them? Right. Of course you will. Absolutely. So will I. Give us a shout. Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, I need help. If we can't help you, we'll make sure you get to the help that, that will. Yep. yep. Now, now I need to clarify though. I, I wouldn't say my wife wasn't supportive. Uh, no she, good. She, That's she, good. Just, she just didn't share the same vision as I did with the with the business. So. That's good. <laughs> I, I have an ex wife, so she <laughs> she definitely was not supportive. Uh, <laughs> She liked the money part when it happened, but when it didn't happen, she didn't like it. Yeah, that's weird, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I didn't didn't quite have that problem. That's good. <laughs> now, what would you do if you felt business uh, was too much to handle? And you could take that one of two ways: you've got too much business, or it's too much to handle. Right. So you can answer whichever way you like. Yeah, because yep. both are good. Yeah, well, I wouldn't mind speaking both ways. Um, uh, you know, I mean, if 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 there's not enough business and and it's just not going the way way you need it to go, well, you you've you've got to you've got to reevaluate, you know, where where you've been and where you're going. Sure. To uh, to see if you can turn that around. More, more door knocking. Uh, yep, yep. And, and, and like you said, you know, if you uh, get to a point where you know the writing's on the wall that you're not going to be able to overcome it, then right. then then you've got to think about that that exit strategy. And, and that's. And the exit strategy can go a bunch of different ways. Am I going to sell the business? Am I going to walk away from it? P.S. Walk away doesn't mean just walk away. You have to legally shut it down and all that stuff. Please don't forget that. <laughs> um, that's definitely important. Um, but, but selling, it's always an option. Right. Um, and I've helped folks throughout the years identify um, what it takes to sell it. And a lot of the folks that I talk to want all the money today. Well, when you're in a bad position, you don't get to make that choice sometimes. Right. But you'll always need money. So what if you took payments? Sure. I mean, be be as flexible as you can be if you're in a situation where, hey, my, my wife's sick and I need to take care of her and I just can't run this business. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stuff. Sure. There's a way to get it done. There's also on this side a bunch of people that are probably watching that want to start a business, don't have enough money. Right. Their credit is not good. Right. What do they do? What if we got those two together? Hey, take take this business over, make monthly payments, pay them more than what they were going to get anyway. Right. Because they're financing it. That's fair. Sure. If, if we do fair things... And we treat people the way that we would want to be treated ourselves. This can work. Exactly. It can always work. So that's when it comes to exit strategy like you were talking about. Right. Do you have one currently? Um, my, my plan actually at this point it is actually to develop more systems and put more systems in place within the business so that the owner does not have to be involved as much as what i have been over the past 31 years gotcha and you like uh, you like your back then it sounds like <laughs> yes yes like like my back well but but like you're saying too the uh the next person that, that may purchase my business you know he may not want to be a carpet cleaner That's uh, true. maybe they just want to own a business and uh you know there, there, there's different ways to run a business and and if someone who has more of a business mentality and, right. and just wants to be a business owner and not a carpet cleaner uh they, they need to have a business that has systems in place that that they can they can take off with it from day one. Absolutely, no, yeah. that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what do you do when the bills inch toward meeting the sales? What what what's the first thing that you you want to put in place, or the first thing you start to figure out? Right uh, now, now personally, 
for my businesses, uh, w w what I've experienced is when that happens, I'm, I'm usually not keeping my prices adjusted with inflation, mm. and 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 you know that can uh, definitely be a the main factor, right? In in your bills overcoming your your uh, income, sure. In that regard, uh, but you know, obviously, you've got the other other things. If you're not keeping track of your expenses. Um, uh, you know, spending money on things you shouldn't be spending money on you right. know, in, in the business. Uh, you, you, so you've got to have that focus. You you really should always have a plan. You know, the short term and the long term plan. Right. Uh, in in building a business, and 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 then you got to look back at that plan to make sure that you're staying with it. So long term business plan, short term budget. Yes. And so, just because that's a neat thing, and you know that it would be cool to have in the truck, and it would make <laughs> things a little bit easier. So sometimes it isn't worth it. In the grand scheme of things, so yes, uh, yes, the the bills can definitely get out of control, and and making sure that they don't is on you. Yes, it's yep. definitely on you. Yep, I've got one of those stories. I probably shouldn't even share this, but uh, oh, yeah, good, I, I, that's the only one. I've got three or four, <laughs> uh, three, four, five thousand dollar machines that that are capable of doing a lot of things. That uh, one in particular is a floor scrubbing machine, uh -huh. and and we use it as a hundred seventy five dollar scrubber on a floor, but but I paid. Four thousand dollars for this machine that will, you know, clean clean carpets, uh, do amazing things. But, right. Uh, uh, but but we've just not needed it for that purpose. Gotcha. A and now I use it for a machine that I could have paid hundred hundred seventy five bucks for. Gotcha. <laughs> um, is that um, do you use that same machine like on tile and things like that? Do you do any of that as well? Yes, that, that's that's actually the that's main main thing for. we use it for now is uh, is is just just putting a floor pad on it and scrubbing scrubbing for stripping wax and floors. Gotcha. Very yep. good. <laughs> Now, we talked a little bit about health earlier uh, in the shutdown part, but um, what if your health got to where the business was too much for you? Kind of the same stuff we were talking about before, yes. it sounds like. Um, yeah. If that happened today, please don't. But if it did, what would your plan be tomorrow? Right. Um, you know, I, I, I do have a good staff in place You know, that, that, that could continue operations uh yeah, for for a certain amount of time. Right. So uh, so yep, everybody needs to have a plan, and myself needs to be even better better than uh, uh, where I'm at at this moment. Right. Uh, for that that fact, but uh, again, I, I said I'm working on that exit strategy. It's not there in place yet. Right. Uh, so uh, well, you never want to drop off. Right. No matter what goes on, um, especially if you transition from I'm doing great to I might need to sell this. It can't go like this, or so does how much money you get. Exactly. So having that plan ready, a contingency plan, if you will, is extremely important to overall valuation of a company. Yes. Yep. I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> um, we talked about what it would be like if you if you had good help. If you couldn't get good help, everybody quit tomorrow. What would you <laughs> what would would Rob just be going crazy or what would you what would you do at that point? Yep. Um well, I I I guess Right away, you'd have to kind of change your scheduling and uh, you know the practices of that, and uh, then get right back out there and, and see if you can find find more help or find new help. Sure. Um, uh, in, in the past, I've I've used like temp agencies and, okay. and, and things like that. So there you know there are some options out there if if, if the sudden need arises. The contingency uh, plan that we talked about, and that's um, you've got two crews. As long as you had two people that could run each crew, you could teach everybody else. Yes. So that's. That's a proper contingency plan, especially when you're running. Uh, we had uh, Frank Hurt in here yesterday, and uh, he's a journeyman glazier. And okay. so he's talking about all these guys that have been apprentices for three or four years and still don't know <laughs> what's going on. So right, you never know who you're going to get. And, and it helps that not only the number one expense, but it can be the number one problem. Yep. So having good help, well, that's that's half the battle for yep. sure. Yep. And, and like I say, for me, I definitely need a, a a good training system. So when someone comes in, you 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 know exactly how long it takes before they're before they're proficient at, there you go. at their job. So gotcha. again, that just comes from the systems and uh, procedures that you can put in place. Very good. Um, finally, on this section, is the business fun for you? Do you feel it's progressing? Could you? Put it in sleep mode, meaning you're not actively going out. You're not putting videos on Facebook. You're not trying to promote it at all. Would you still be able to operate, or do you still have to push? 
I would say we are at that point. You mm-hmm. know, you know, we, we could ex- exist now, now. Again, I don't know for how long. You gotcha. know, we're, we're you, you still would need someone then to step into my place and 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 direct the company where it's going to go for sure for the future. Um, you know, if I've got a five year plan in place, well, then beyond that, you know, who knows what would happen. Sure. Um, but uh, um, yeah, for, yeah. For the most part, uh, like I say, my my business would 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 be fine in in in, in that mode. But it could always be better. Okay. Yeah. Very good. The Shut It Down section of this podcast was brought to you by CreditTwister.com. If your personal credit is trash, but you still have the heart of an entrepreneur, why not let the business credit save the day? CreditTwister.com is the gateway to developing a credit score based on your EIN, not your SSN. If you have been worried that your past will ruin your future, check out CreditTwister.com right now to start building a solid tomorrow with standalone business credit. The final minutes. Now, the last section here as we know, in the final minutes, is a little crazy. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, this is the part I've been scared of. Well, <laughs> we've had some folks that just their brains kind of shut down. Luckily, I can edit this whole thing, so <laughs> so it doesn't look too bad. But there, there's been some times. Let's, let's start with a softball, and then we'll move into the other ones. Okay. What is your go-to order at your favorite hometown restaurant? Oh my goodness! This is the thing, you all, man. If we're doing this tonight, love it. Yep. Oh, Dallas Filet, Texas Roadhouse. Nice. Yep. Now, do you, do you get it to go, or do you stay for the dancing? Oh, we're staying there. We're staying there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, what is something that you aren't very good at? Ooh. <laughs> He's good at everything. Yeah, yeah, Rob's, see, yeah, Rob's yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. I, I guess coming up with great responses to a, to a, to a difficult question. That's a really solid answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me um, about a common myth about your industry, and can you debunk it for us? Okay, boy, a real common myth. Uh, when, when, once you get your carpets clean, they just get dirty faster, faster. All right. That's not true. We we hear that one all the time, all the time, uh, and and kind of what I, I would like to uh, uh, debunk that with is, uh, let, let's say you have a carpet and uh, you get it clean once in ten years, okay, all right, because you know you don't want it to resoil and get all dirty, right? All right, so so you think your carpet's going to be cleaner at the end of those ten years, mm-hmm. or uh, you know would would, would the and let me even try it a different way. Let's say you're going to buy a home, right, and the previous owner got the carpet clean once every year or the previous owner got it clean just once in those 10 years you know, which, which one would you feel more comfortable walking on sure uh, so uh, now you you make a uh, a cool point with that it gets dirtier faster now sometimes can if the i'm going to make sure i'm saying this right if the temperature isn't hot enough can it leave some of the chemicals on the carpet which uh, could attract dirt uh, that that can be a factor. You know, it, it can Ha-ha! be. Uh, Nailed uh, it. But uh, but 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 let me go back a little further though. You know, historically, uh, people shampooed uh, carpets. You know, like with scrubber machines. Mm-hmm. And this is really where that that all started. Was was you know in the '60s and '70s when when people were just dumping a lot of a lot of product in, into a carpet without maybe a lot of chemistry knowledge. Right. Uh, the industry now is, is so much more advanced. You know, in, in the chemistry that, that we put into the carpets. Gotcha. Uh, uh, the, the, the no residue methods and, and right. chemicals that are available these days are you know, nothing compared to what uh, what started that myth okay. you know, back in the day. And, and, and so back in the day, you know, maybe, maybe it did in 1970 when, the, when they were cleaning carpets. But uh, sure. the modern day industry, uh, and, and I can even say for my competitors, you know, I, there's probably no one in St. Joseph that, that is having problems leaving residue in carpet that would resoil. Good. Okay. So... What is the craziest stain you've ever had to clean out of a carpet? <laughs> craziest stain? Uh, let's see. My my mind goes immediately to the grossest 
Uh, well, uh, I mean, we can uh, do thing. gross up to a point, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. It usually relates to uh, uh, things that have died. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet. Know, and then you know, removing some of those stains and 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 the associated odors. You know, that, that, right. that that's where it becomes comes. Uh, uh, there, you know, you have the visual aspect, but but when you're in that room and you can smell that, you're thinking, oh my goodness, this right. is uh, this is so, quite a task. So um, I know that there are uh, companies that specialize in crime scenes and biohazard and things like that. Right. When they're done, do they call the carpet cleaners to come in and do one last run, or or do they do all that themselves? They would typically do that themselves, and okay. and, and and depending on what you're exactly doing with, most of the time, uh, in, in a case like that, you're you're removing carpet, not not cleaning it. Oh, okay. And uh, now, obviously, you know. The, but could you uh, clean it? Uh, uh, <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if I should share this story or not, but uh, yes, we, those we, are the stories we want. Rob, I told you. Yes, uh, we we had a recent incident in town where uh, 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 a knife was involved. Okay. And um, we sent one of my crew out to uh, to clean clean a, an associated mess with with this. Right. And uh, he he took photos and he sent them to me. He said, "Should I call the police?" Uh, was his response. And uh, that's yeah. an excellent yeah. question. That's well that's well taught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out we'd, uh, you know, Radfree got done. It was all over the the news stories of of what had happened, and uh, police already knew about it. So, oh, good. So, so yeah, we we, we did need to report. And, well, that's and, good. And, and luckily, we're not mandated. So, uh, and you're you're not making the news. You're just reporting it. That's <laughs> that's way different. That's way different. Yes. Yeah. Um, which European country epitomizes your personality, and why? Oh my goodness! Um, well, see, I don't know my European countries that well, but uh, you only have a few to choose from. <laughs> in, in the Army Reserve, I spent uh, seven months in Germany. Okay, and uh, uh, enjoyed my time there. So, uh, I guess we did take a summer training session in Italy. I'm have to go with one of those two, but uh, but but Germany's got got the most time for me. So. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> a little more Lederhosen, a little less. Uh, a little less Coliseum. Yep, just show me, show me where the Bonhoff is. Okay, yes. very good. <laughs> and finally, let's talk about what's next for you, as far as because entrepreneurs don't stop. Right. They're right. always thinking about something else. Yep. What are you thinking about next for you? Yes, next next for me, uh, we'll probably move, moving more into the real estate uh, and, and rental property business, uh, okay. as we talked about earlier with the mobile home park. Okay. Um, but you know, something you'd asked earlier, and my, and my brain almost went there, and, and and I didn't bring it up, was that, that where we're at with the business right now, and 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 yeah, I'm 51 years old, mm. so I, so I have been thinking about that exit strategy. I'm sure. Uh, in, you know, in time, and, and but I'm actually more excited about what the future of my business is right now nice. th- th- than I have been in the last 31 years. Uh, and when we talk about um, real estate, are you talking about residential, commercial, self-storage? I mean... Uh, m- mostly just rental property uh, 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 type stuff in the residential market. Gotcha. Uh, uh, I, w- I wouldn't mind going a little bit more into commercial. Uh, uh, I think there might be a, a little bit less maintenance and a few, uh, <laughs> a few different scenarios there. That yeah, you they have, pay your rent and take with. care of it themselves. That's a great deal. <laughs> I like that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's go over your contact points just one more time. Okay. Yep. Facebook. Facebook, The Clean Connection of St. Joseph. Perfect. And then the website. The website, thecleanconnection.net. And you give them your phone number as well. Yep, office number, 816-232-4121. And uh, our hours are 830 to 4, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, as far as the office goes. And we're, we're willing to schedule after-hours appointments as needed. Gotcha. Very convenient. Rob, really appreciate your time today. Yep. Thanks for stopping by. Yep, hey, appreciate being here. This has been the Missouri Business Podcast. Again, I am your host, John Piazza Norton, and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Missouri Business Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, MissouriBusinessPodcast.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, so you get the ding when the next one is out. And if you have a question to pose on the show, just shoot us a comment on the website or like the John Piazza Norton Facebook fan page for direct access. Be sure to tune in next time when we squeeze the brain of another business leader for your benefit. Talk is cheap. I'm from Missouri. You have got to show me. See you next time.